saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand Walking through the streets of Soho in the rain He was looking for the place called Lee Ho Fuchs Gonna get a big dish of beef chow mein I get an uh, email every year. You better not get him in. Just one? From Andrea. Well, just one. So, okay, so I get two. I get one every year, and then I get one from Andrea. Andrea listens in Cuyahoga Falls. I get an email from her every year on her birthday because she shares her birthday with the late, great Warren Zevon. He would have been 77 years old today. Uh, he died 20 years ago as of last fall, I guess. He's on my Mount Rushmore. Love, 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 Warren Zevon. Uh, so Andre emails me once a year. Happy birthday to me and Neil Diamond and Warren Zevon and, of course, Fiona the Hippo out there at the Cincinnati Zoo that we just mentioned the other day as well. I would have been hard-pressed to have known that, but I did know it was Warren Zevon's birthday. So it'll be another year until I hear from Andrea in Cuyahoga Falls. But you can listen to Warren Zevon anytime you like. If you like him. A lot of people, he's not even on their radar. You know, there's a whole genre of singer, songwriter, artists that have their own fan bases, but they're kind of largely unknown to other people. Uh, kind of esoteric acts. But when Warren Zevon was touring, boy, I never, never didn't go see him. And as his career went on, the stage production got pared down as he started selling fewer and fewer albums. You know, he'd show up with a full band, and nine months later, he'd come back, and it would just be uh, him with a guitar and a piano. But those were, um, if you dug him, it's Fleetwood Mac. It's uh, Mick Fleetwood and John McVie are the rhythm section on this song. And Werewolves of London was... Uh, the question in a show, is anyone watching The Floor on Fox? Is anybody Never watching this? Heard of this? Okay, so it's a game show that Rob Lowe is hosting, and it's called The Floor. And I had seen promos for it, but I'm like, I don't, you know. We're already watching a couple of uh, competition reality shows. But we were clicking around last night, and we're kind of always looking for something that we can watch with our daughter that isn't The Simpsons or Bob's Burgers because she can watch those ad nauseum, and frankly, I can too. But I was like, let's look around. Game shows are pretty safe, and you can get sucked into them pretty quickly. Well, Rob Lowe is over on Fox, and he's hosting a show called The Floor. And he must have signed some kind of 360 deal with Fox because he's on one of their, like, fireman shows, you know? He's a mm -hmm. 911 guy or something. And then he's hosting this game show, and then he hosts a documentary about the Boston Tea Party on Fox Nation, which is Fox News' streamer. He was taking all kinds of heat for doing something on Fox Nation. I'm like, the guy, who cares? The guy wants to work. Um, so he's clearly doing all this stuff for Fox. So the floor is this big, huge trivia battle. They have 81 people that they've just plucked from the public who've tried to get on this show. 81 people stand on these 81 squares. It's this massive game show floor, hence the name of the show. And the conceit is, is that each one of these people says that they are an expert in some area. So there's aerial shots of the floor, and they have a thing that randomly chooses one of these people. And they go, this, this guy says that he's an expert in dogs. And so they go up. And then they pick another person, and they're like, okay, here's your choices, because it has to be an adjacent square to them. And then little by little, if they win their trivia rounds, they get more space on the floor until ostensibly it's one person left. So they're competing for like two hundred and fifty grand. I also don't know when $250,000 got to be the prize now on every show. It used to be a million dollars. I don't know if this is... Um, yeah, but when they're doing... 
five seasons a year, they're like, ugh, that's a little much. Yeah, I don't know how many they're but, doing. But I, I, also, when it was a million dollars, it was always like you could win up to a million dollars. Like, Well, like I think Survivor, I know there's more to it than it's not a trivia game. Survivor's pretty involved. That's still a million dollars. But like even these shows where we're watching The Trust on Netflix and we're watching The Traders on Pete with Alan Cumming and – you know, those are all two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So I didn't know if they were just pairing back on these prizes, uh, whatever. It might just be coincidence. Um, and I think we're coming late to the floor. We started watching it. I think they're three or four episodes in. But anyway, it, it's entertaining enough. It's innocuous. It's you know, but Werewolves of London was one of the questions last night because this girl, what they discover is that a lot of these people aren't exactly experts in anything. They just probably made it up to get on the show. And then they have to go head-to-head with each other. Well, this one girl says that uh, she's an expert in rock songs. Oh, and so okay. this guy... <laughs> this guy... That's exactly uh, how I would expect someone that's an expert in rock songs to describe themselves as an expert. Be like, oh, me? I'm a rock songs right. expert. Well, that's what I mean. It's 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 really weird. You know, like one girl says her expertise is in vegetables. Whatever. whatever. So I think a lot of these people, because the thing is. Which vegetables? Yeah. <laughs> this, the two people will go head to head and whoever wins inherits the other person's so-called area of expertise. So they can end up going against somebody else on dogs, but they don't know dogs. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of weird. Anyway, so the one of the categories was songs about places. And this girl's like, I'm going to kill it. I, you know, she's like a 31-year-old marketing executive or whatever. People call themselves. You can't tell what anybody does anymore on these shows because they give themselves an important sounding. You know, it's a 21-year-old kid. It says he's a merchandiser. I'm like, oh, okay. So he wor- works at a retail store or something. You know, He calls himself a merchandiser. Anyway, so they, the, the category that we're watching is songs about places. And there's a big screen, and they just go back and forth. Until their time runs out, one of them wins. And this girl who swore up and down that she would know songs about places, it's just text on the screen and a blank they have to fill in. And it says, Warren Zevon, werewolves of blank. (laughs) She goes, pass. Kiss, blank rock city. She goes, New York? (laughs) Yeah, Even New Pound York Cake knows that song, right? Oh. Detroit. <laughs> Detroit, Rock City. Would you have known Werewolves of Blank? London. <laughs> My favorite was, so that's just the girl, but she's going against the guy, and the guy's killing. I mean, he's knocking people down left and right, but even he whiffs a few. Then they have Randy Newman, I Love Blank. Very famous song. L.A. L.A. <laughs> He says New York. <laughs> he goes, New York? Yeah, you know, the classic Randy Newman. Now, a lot of this is, uh, unfortunately, it's generational, right? I mean, if you're 31, they have this one girl up there. She goes, well, I wasn't even born in the 90s or in the 80s. One of them was the 80s. And she's like, I wasn't even born in the 80s, so I don't know. And it was a lot of womp womp. You know? There's not a lot of people that claim to be an expert in something that go like, but not the stuff before I was born. <laughs> How could I be right. an expert in world history mm-hmm. or World War II if I wasn't even born yet? I'm an historian, but I was born in 1982. So that was great watching these people. They had They Might Be Giants, blank, not Constantinople. Now that one now you can see. that one's a little You obscure. can see where people might not get that one. I would have ran through this category. I think you would have too. Yes, I did. Even Pound Cake did okay. Yep. Do you know that song, Pound Cake? What song? Um, the, the band is They Might Be Giants, and it was blank, not Constantinople. It's kind of a novelty song. Did you ever hear that song from They I Might Be Giants? I haven't known almost any of these. I don't know that. No. <clears throat> Istanbul. Istanbul was Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul, oh, not Constantinople. You've I heard that, that song. The, is that the song from Franken, Young Frankenstein? <laughs> no, that's putting no. on the Ritz. That's putting on, oh. put on the Ritz. Yeah. Oh, God, how did I know that? This is a song from the '80s. But that's uh, you. The way that you just sang that Constantinople song sounded exactly like that. Yeah, it's kind of got a little bit of a similar rhythm, but it's not. It's it's its own song. You're your own song. Constantinople been a long time gone. 
it's the same song. Now it's church July on a moonlit night. Every gal in Constantinople lives in Istanbul. In Constantinople, so if you a date in Constantinople, she'll be waiting in uh, Istanbul. Putting on her Even old New York was once New Amsterdam. Why, Why they changed it, I can't say. People just liked it better that way. <laughs> 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 Nothing against those guys, but I always knew in college if I met somebody that was really into They Might Be Giants, we were not going to get along. Yeah, well, I knew that it was we were. Ju- yeah, it was <laughs> just not for me, and God bless them because Blood they is a great album. had a long, One long career. Favorites. And they found their uh, their niche. They found their fan base. But uh, I remember doing a report on the Triangle Man song in a speech class in ninth grade. And everybody else was Particle doing... Particle Man? Yeah, Particle Man. Yeah. No, Triangle Man. He doesn't even know well, the goddamn songs, <laughs> and I know man, him, and he's man. like, they're my favorite band of all I'm time. I'm never good with song names. Song. Uh-huh. I just let albums play. Yeah, but you also were like, 40 seconds ago, you're like, I would have ran through this category. What well, other category? I knew all the answers. So, but it was funny. I mean, if you're going to go down... Uh, well, they give me all but one word, I can figure it out. Got most yeah. of the words right on Particle Man. The songs. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Right. He got the That's title wrong. wrong. Yeah. That's not most. No, listen. If he, if you know most of the lyrics, but you forget the name of the song, you know the song. Yeah. But that's not what is important. Well, not for that game show. Exactly. But for Bill's, uh, for Bill's bona fides as a They Might Be Giants fan, I oh, believe him. Goodness. Right. Um, people who are into They Might Be Giants are also into Bare Naked Ladies. And they're also into cake. cake. And they're also into <laughs> REM. And they're, you know. Uh, right. Well, not so much REM. But it's that. But I make up for it with my love of There's a Beck Venn diagram and, there. Uh, now, I love Beck. And uh, Blues Traveler. There you go. Blues Traveler. That's right. They did that farting song. You remember the Blues Traveler farting Found song? a farting song. You made it a farting song. No, that was John Popper's stomach. His stomach was making weird noises when they were trying to record Runaround. That's all it was, Bill. That's an outtake from those sessions. Oh. <laughs> hey, I got money for you. Derivative. Uh, I've, <laughs> I have don't know finances. I've got um, money for you. It's $1,000. Maybe you know finances. Is $1,000 good? Uh, I'll Not let bad. you be the judge, and I hope that you win. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the buzzard bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Green. That's green. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Alan, Mary probably knows Birdhouse in Your Soul. You probably know that song from They Might Be Giants. Because that was used in in like movies and things and... Never heard yeah, this song. I, I I can't handle Not it. Not one I, day um, in my life. Okay, well, maybe when they get to the chorus, you might remember it. Your but chorus. I don't have I don't have the uh, stamina uh, to put you through that. I'm gonna listen to that on the way home today. <laughs> <laughs> Just put on flood. Yeah. There was uh, an episode of Tiny Tunes where they made music videos, basically. For That's what people of, are texting me. Of, Tiny uh, Tunes. Uh, Understand. Songs by that by they might be giants. And Bill, that's how listen, I got into it. You listen to that music and you have the audacity to tell me that the music I listen to is trash. Yeah, audacity. That music was bad. Audacity. The last Great. four songs he just played were trash. They're all very good songs. No, not even close. Brilliant. I brilliant see, compositions. I just like. Um, there's nothing wrong with that music. I just like my music a little, a little more muscular. I guess. There's. I mean, and it's not like that's of, everyday music. It's it. It's more of nostalgic music, but I just enjoy it. Right. No, I get it. I mean, there's but there's people who, like, those are their favorite bands, you know? Like, oh, they might be giants. I mean, you know. Every band is someone's favorite band. I don't Not know about true. that. <laughs> I don't know about no, that. every band is someone's favorite band. You think so? I think so. Think about it. Even if it's a girlfriend or a, a crazed fan who's the only person who gets that band on uh, song kick or whatever. 
Every band is someone's favorite band. Okay. It is fascinating to see what uh, maybe obscure to you and me bands some people really will glom on to. It is interesting I how— I do remember meeting a girl whose favorite band was Everclear, and I was like, really? And I thought she was joking. I'm like, yeah, that's no one's favorite band. She's like, no, right. I've seen them 38 but times. At least, like, what? But at least you could make the case Everclear has had a lot of hits. Yes. So I'm talking about people that are like, they are the biggest fans of like this band that's way over here. Mm-hmm. You don't even know how they found them in the pre-streaming the age. You know, that's they spent the a lot thing. of time in import record stores. Some you think there's somebody whose favorite? Themselves. You think there's somebody whose favorite band is the Chainsmokers? Yes, they've been touring for so long. <laughs> but their favorite. My sister has seen the Chainsmokers. Yeah, but that but feels like a, that, band. it feels like a seasoning band. Like if you like them enough to go see them. But nobody would be like, oh, my God, anything those guys do, I'll go. Yeah, they do. The chain smoke. Yeah, there's somebody. I, One I, of my I, sister's favorite bands is 21 Pilots. Yeah, but, but that's again, a they lot have of hits. people. They have and, a huge following. And is your sister 11? She's 30. Oh, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, their fans are 20 now, too. They've been around a minute. Here's one. Br- uh, Taylor Swift. I never there even heard of her. There is no one who's going to go, mm, I like that guy. Gesundheit. Gesundheit. I'm allergic. I gotta go home. You're allergic to Taylor Swift? To this to the show. I wonder if Taylor Swift is that announcement they're supposed to make. I doubt it. Uh, we all got this PR notification. Is she doing was... another North American tour? I don't know. I also didn't say if the, we got the announcement that there's going to be a huge announcement tomorrow at the Brown Stadium saying that some stadium act is coming through. But they didn't say if it was for this year or next year. Right. They, maybe they, it's Bill Joel. They usually don't. Maybe. Maybe. I think it's going to be. They usually those, don't have media days when they're going to announce a concert. Billy Joel or like, it's but a, I, I like Def Leppard. I could believe it, it, it could be Taylor Swift because every time she comes through, she boosts like the economy and we need the money. So they're like, let, let her just do a concert here for like a day and then see how much. We hotel, need the money. They, honestly, the, the potholes yeah. get fixed. The hotel rooms are booked. Like stuff gets changed I don't think here. it moves that quickly. Wait, wait. <laughs> Through T Swift, we can do all things. Oh, that's funny. She is dating a, a guy from Cleveland. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's it's like a listen, favor. Like, hey, please, I'll marry you, but you gotta uh, come to my city. You gotta do a show in Cleveland. <laughs> Wait, make them some money. Travis Kelsey is from Ohio. Yeah, did you not know that? Why don't they mention that? Did you know? Is that his Carson- brother? Yeah, yeah, Jason. Oh, they're both from here. Could you believe that? That they were born into the same family in the same city. Oh my God. Why why don't they tell people that? I don't know. Alan, Rich down in Jacksonville, Florida. Listen back to the podcast from yesterday. You guys are discussing Oprah Winfrey owning a house in every state and if it would be, you know, out in the rural area or not. And I can tell you my in laws, they live out in Oak Island, North Carolina, where Oprah does have a property and it is out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, actually a gated community, really restricted, hard to get access to. Love me, love you, hate your show. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. I love bread. Yeah, I, love yeah, I think bread. it's Taylor Swift. There's probably a lot of bread to be had out there in rural North Carolina. Yeah, if you're Oprah, why wouldn't you have a house in every state? I love bread. It's not going to be Taylor Swift because they have a rock hall guy there. They have a rock Yeah, but she'll probably be in in 2036. Yeah, so. she's, she's, it's going to be it's gonna be an old. Pe- it's going to be an old people. Oh, band. not you too. Mm. No, I just don't. You two's mm. already played there. It's not going to be someone who's played there. I mean, Stones are already booked. Yeah. Well, um, Billy Joel, ACDC, Def Leppard, and Journey aren't but, all those guys on like their quote farewell. Well, well no. Uh, uh, but what I'm saying well, is Journey's already booked. What I'm saying is they don't ever have like invitations to the go Eagles? see you talk about. Yeah. No, no. They were just at the they Rebel Theater here, yeah. on the farewell tour. Maybe it's the Lovers oh. and Friends tour. What is that? I saw that line. Did you need right? Oh, it's literally if you were Cody and I's age in the 2000s. Oh my God. It's the best like hip hop and R&B lineup. There I isn't like a name on that seen. list that I don't know. Same. And it's all one day. I was like, that needs to be a weekend. It's probably was, a lovers was, and friends. I'm telling you. This. Usher, Janet Jackson, Backstreet Boys are your headliners. But this is in Vegas. The festival's in Vegas. one night in, or one day in Vegas. And I'm like, there's no, that should be a weekend festival. Snoop, Gwen Stefani, Nas, Nelly, Furtado, Ludacris, Mary J. Blige. Ludacris, the guy from the insurance commercials? Mm -hmm. Oh. Like uh, Pretty Ricky and Ying Yang Twins. Pretty Ricky, Pretty Ricky. (laughs) Pretty Ricky, Ricky. Pretty Ricky. Tyrese. 
Robin Thick. Dude, 98 it, it, degrees from looks, Cincinnati, Ohio. I wish I could go to that. If it were a weekend, I would go for sure. Kelly Rowland, Cameron, Twista, Neo. They got Akon on there. Yes. MIA, where's she been? Lil Ooh, she's Wayne. been, literally. I went on, and Lil Wayne's MIA. playing the Carter Three, too. Um, and Usher's playing Confessions. I went on an Akon just tear the other day where I was reliving so many middle school hits where I was like, man, I forgot how much I loved Akon. How would you like to be the eight-point font artists on these big but posters? But what we're saying like, is, is that those eight-point fonts are were still really popular. Akon was huge in the like, very early two. Yes. What huh. peaches and cream. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right, that's, I believe that's you. That's 112. That's the only song I know by them. But All right. Cody, who was that? Well, then Can you guys, why don't uh, you guys me, go to Vegas? Give me They Might Be Giants Any Day. Over Cody, who all was that those. band that uh, I think they had like a '69 song or something? Like yeah. That? What was it? It was about um, you ain't gotta say nice. too much from the look in your eyes. Oh, I got a break. <laughs> um, the question <laughs> is, will will Cisco be with Drew Hill, or will it just be those other scrubs who were left? Drew Hill's on that bill, and will Khalees reunite with Bill Murray? It's five oh four, boys. All right. I've got to take a break here. Uh, if you want those tickets to see the Cavs when the Kings are in town, I'll hook you up after the break. Want to text me 35192, and you can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Rover's Morning Glory. So do you would date people and fake cry to make them feel bad? I dated a... 